Welcome back to the channel and congratulations on your new kayak. Whether you bought it yourself for Christmas or maybe your significant other bought you a nice Christmas present it was under the tree about six days ago. Either way, whatever the case may be, you're like, you got a kayak? Now what? So that's today's video. So if you have any questions at all, just hit the comments below and hopefully this video will shed some light on the matter and what to purchase first when you get your new kayak. This is the number one thing you need to buy before a paddle. Yes, before a paddle. Okay, you need to buy yourself a nice PFD personal flotation device that you're going to wear that supports your weight and can keep you above the water if you capsize. Number one. Now you don't have to get a nice life jacket. This is the NRS Chinook. It's a very nice life jacket. It's one of my favorites out there on the market. Uh, it's very, very popular with kayak anglers. You don't have to buy this. You can get one of those orange $5 ones from Walmart if you want that goes around your neck and you look like you're puffed up like an elephant. I don't know. Okay, you can get one of those, it's fine. But what I highly recommend is getting a personal flotation device that is comfortable and you're gonna wear it consistently. All right, people with those orange jackets, they don't wear them. You don't catch them dead in the boat with those on, unless it's like a five-year-old kid, okay? Get you a life jacket that's gonna fit you good and you're gonna to want to wear it. Another reason a PFD is very, very important, the number one thing I would buy as soon as I get a kayak is you can turn it into a workbench. You got all these pockets and things to put your uh, snips on, your whistle, your knife. You got all these little pockets and you can put these accessories on there. Really uh, outfit your life jacket for a workbench. It's gonna be a workbench on the water for you. It's gonna be things that are gonna be close to you. You can reach them easily without turning behind you and getting anything out of your tank well, okay? So number one, buy you a PFD. It don't have to be fancy or super expensive, but make sure it's comfortable and you're gonna to want to wear it. All right, number two, make sure you're seen on the water, make sure you're heard on the water, okay? You wanna be seen and heard on the water. What do I mean by that? Well, make sure you have some type of, you know, this is a fancy one. This is a Busy Carbon Probe. It's an orange flag with the 360 light on it. I've seen people where they uh, made one out of PVC pipe and put a flashlight in a Rubbermaid Tupperware bowl on top. It don't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to be fancy, but make sure you're seen on the water with some type of flag and 360 light, especially if you're in the early hours or the late hours fishing, okay? Number two, be heard on the water. You see so many YouTube videos where people are getting ran over by boats, boaters that don't see uh, that kayak out there or other boat on the water. So have a whistle, lost it, have a whistle attached to your PFD and be heard. That, that was a weak whistle blow, but that I don't want to blow it too loud and blow your ears off. That's my excuse. But anyways, make sure you can blow this thing and it's super loud and obnoxious and people around you, other boaters, can see and hear you on the water. Number three, of course. Obviously, you're gonna need something to propel you in the water. Even if you bought a brand new pedal drive, you still need a paddle, okay? You uh, can't put that pedal drive down in less than five inches of water. So get a paddle. It don't have to be something fancy. This one is about a $200 paddle. You don't have to have a $200 paddle. This one right here is a step down. This is a $100 paddle. This is a bending branch. Angler Scout for $99, great paddle, a lightweight paddle for the price. It don't even have to be that. This paddle right here is a No Limits Propel Paddle that came from Academy Sports for, I think, $29. Does it get the job done? Absolutely. You don't have to break the bank in purchasing a new paddle. Uh, over time, if you want to upgrade your paddle, absolutely. But starting out, you don't need a $400 paddle Especially if you're starting out, you may break that paddle because you don't know what you're doing with it just yet. Or you might lose that paddle, it might not float. You know, you get my drift. Don't throw your money down the sink, especially if you're a beginner. Now to number five. So the main purpose you bought that kayak was probably to kayak fish. That's what this tag in this video says. I'm assuming you already have a fishing pole in your house. You just wanted something to get you out into those sweet secret holes with, so you bought a kayak. 
Your boat may or may not have a place to hold those fishing rods. Let me show you. If you look at my brand new Crescent Light Tackle, in the back right here, these, uh, these two black things right here, those are Mighty Mounts by Yak Attack. They're not flush mount rod holders. There's no rod holder on this kayak at the moment. Your kayak may be the same way. You might buy a kayak and maybe it has two mold-in rod holders that are crap. I'm just gonna admit to it, they're horrible. I don't know why they waste the time and the effort to put those in there, because they don't fit a rod butt at all. You put your rod butt in there and it's like this. You have a little bitty thing in this big old hole and just like wiggles all over the place. It don't make any sense. I don't know why they do it, but whatever, okay? So, but you might not have a good rod holder or you might not have one at all. So the first things first is, you know, you want a place to stow your rods. That way they're not at your feet the whole entire time. Now there's some pros and cons with them being at your feet, but I find more cons than pros at my feet. So I'd rather them be behind me or out of the way, out of sight. All right, so you look here, you have all types of options for holding your rods, okay? The cheapest way, the less expensive way, without putting holes in your boat, that would be a milk crate. So here you got just a plain Jane milk crate. You can get these five to six bucks, maybe $10, depending on where you go. Super inexpensive to put your tackle inside and you can take some PVC pipe and uh, cut them down where they're gonna fit your rod butt and just uh, zip tie them to the rod crate. Super cheap way of stowing your tackle and your rods. Now you can upgrade, of course. That'd be uh, with something like this. I have a Yak Gadget uh, crate. It's the uh, low profile crate, it's about $100. You also got the black pack out there, another $100. You got the Wilderness Systems crate, which is probably 150 bucks. I mean, you got all these options out there. They can add up quickly, but in a nutshell, you can get a cheap milk crate and put some PVC pipe in it and save tons of money. Or you can just get two flush mount holders from uh, you know Academy Sports, Walmart, and just uh, mount them down in your kayak. You gotta bore a hole out. All right, this brings me to my next point. This probably should have been right after PFD, but I, I skipped. Have you a first aid kit? I'll uh, link a video in the description below. I uh, got hooked super, super bad by myself on an eight mile float adventure. That was an all day adventure, and I hooked myself early into the trip, like within an hour, and I still had four hours of paddling left. It was a nightmare. I didn't know what I was gonna do. I was freaking out a little bit. Okay, here's that video right there in the corner. Now, if I didn't have a uh, first aid kit or a nice set of pliers, I'd been in deep trouble. Yes, you can go to Dollar General or the Dollar Tree and get you one of those little dollar pairs of pliers, but they're worthless, okay? A, they're gonna rust out within two weeks B, they're not gonna cut through some of those fancy treble hooks. I had to push that hook through my finger and use my nice pliers here and cut one of those treble hooks out so I can push it back through the other way because the bar was really hindering me pulling it out of my hand. So have you a nice set of pliers, heavy duty pliers, nice fishing pliers. Yes, spend some extra money on a nice pair of pliers and get you a cheap and expensive first aid kit put some antiseptic in there and some bandages or something. That way you don't get an infection, you get gangrene and your finger falls off. So, you know, you get the point. So anyways, uh, so number four, number five-ish, have you a nice set of pliers, A, get the hook out of the fish's mouth, but also get a hook out of your mouth if you slingshot it to your face. And have you a nice first aid kit with some options in it. Now down the road, you can have you a fish finder, you can have you know, some waterproof casing, you can have a leash, you know, uh, this is just spare battery, stuff like that. You get into a lot of different things. But you don't need all that starting off the gate. Remember, you just bought your kayak, so you don't have to buy everything at once. But for sure, get these few things I've already mentioned in this video, because it's going to help you a lot on the water. Keep you safe, but also keep you more efficient on that water. It don't matter if you're new, intermediate or advanced, always go out with a friend. 
there's times where my friends are like, dude, it's way too cold. I'm not getting out there to go fly fish with you for trout. I'm not getting out there to go jigging for some crappie. It's just too cold, uncomfortable. I'm not doing it. So you might have those times where you're alone, you're by yourself. If that's the case, look into getting the app Life360. Now, I don't get sponsored by this app or anything like that. I don't get any commission. It's just an app that my wife and myself use so that way we can keep tabs on each other, mainly when we're doing an adventure, stuff like that. So I'm very active when it comes to being outdoors. I love hunting. I love uh, kayak fishing. I love kayaking in general. So with that Life360 app, she can kind of follow along and see where I'm at. I can even send out an SOS signal from it as long as there's cell service. Okay, that brings me up to another point. Uh, they are expensive, but you can get you one of those little satellite in touch um, or reach little uh, devices. That way you can uh, send out a message whether you have service or not. You have to pay like a monthly prescription to those, but they're well worth the investment, especially keeping you safe out there on the water or letting know a loved one that's super stressed and worried about you constantly to let them know that you're okay. So definitely look into those in-touch reach systems. That way you can uh, send a signal out if you are in trouble or just send a signal out to that wife of yours or that significant other, your spouse. That way they know you're okay. So check those out as well. Well, that pretty much wraps up this video. I know it's kind of short and sweet, but I did want to shed some light to you what I do first when I get a new kayak. Now, all these things I already own, but you might not own them yourself. I just wanted to let you know what's the first things I put or make sure I have on my kayak, especially if it's a new kayak that's not outfitted. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you on the next adventure.